Kelly, you want to see a chart that gives airline executives heartburn? Check this out. We're talking about jet fuel in the last year, up 72 percent. And remember, outside of labor, this is the biggest expense for the airlines. And now, as you look at jet fuel over the last 10 years, you've got to go back to 2014. That is the last time that we saw jet fuel prices at this level. No surprise, as the price has gone up, We've seen the pressure increase on the airline stocks. You mentioned about United being down more than 10 percent today. We're looking at 52-week lows really for all of the majors across the board. They are all under pressure today. An ugly day any way you look at it. And then you've got American. It was downgraded today by Seaport going from a buy down to a neutral. What can you expect from the airline stocks, let's say, over the next couple of weeks? We are in guidance season. I would say, Kelly, within I wouldn't be surprised, but within the next week, two weeks, we will likely hear from a number of these airlines as they get a better sense of what's happening with jet fuel prices in terms of, hey, we're going to bring down our numbers for the first quarter at least. I can't imagine how frustrated they and investors must be to have them finally come out yep. from the pandemic only to face this oncoming train. So should we expect them to raise ticket prices? I mean, can that help offset if the consumer is willing to pay up for travel right now? Well, the consumer will pay up to an extent, and they're already raising fares, but it's not going to be enough to offset a 72% increase in jet fuel prices from a year ago. So you will see some higher fares, but certainly not enough for them to say, oh, yeah, we can still make the uh, projections that we had out there for the first quarter and the second quarter.